Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to episode 7 of Sandwalls, the Armored Heart. So, what's up for today? We're going to continue digging our little... Well, the cistern for that. And, well, we're going to go and see how far we can get with our little armory project. And look at that, we're striking water all by ourselves. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. So I had the plan to just uh, strike an aquifer and let it bleed into the cistern. I mean, it is uh, quite handy that uh, the cistern has just decided to do me the favor and do exactly the same. That's pretty cool. I do like. So let's see. Yeah, damp stone located cancellations. That is no big deal. And what I want to do for today is also check out the situation up here. And once that's completed, I want to start finding the, the proper stone for all this. But I actually already have my made my decision. So that's more work for the miners, though, because the stone that I want to use for this particular endeavor, well, we haven't excavated it yet, so that's all I can say. Now, more. There we go. So with this concept, there's always going to be a way of crawling back out. Here we go. And, well, let's do one more layer. So that should suffice. Then we're going to put nice floorboards there, and the center of that will be the, the well. All right, nice and shiny. So, well, the, the longer I think about it, the, the more I realize that we actually don't need to do anything complicated here due to the fact that there is already an aquifer around the corner for us. So what I'm going to do now is quite simple. I'm going to dig out one more layer deeper. And then we're going to, to leave that be. That's more than enough. So, why does nobody take up that job, I wonder? Is it somehow cursed? Ah, it ain't. Okay, so that one chamber here, we're now going to expand and we are going to go and dig our way back upstairs here because whoever is going down there is going to be no longer able to go upstairs at some point because when all these here are excavated you cannot uh, crawl back up on the uh, on the ramps because ramps only work when they have a wall they they lean to so to speak Right. So, yeah, that'll bring us more than enough water to work with. That's that's really fun. So let's see and make sure that this works out as intended as well. Okay, one more layer. They're quite stubborn about this. But they're dwarfs, so stubbornness is actually a a virtue. Now, that should be enough. And after that, we're going to slap down the floorboards and call it a day. So there's a bit of conglomerate, but, uh, well, pretty sure we'll have to say just goodbye to that stuff. What are my miners doing all the time? That's uh, what I kind of wonder. 
We are going to go for our Dwarf of the Day in a uh, second, once this uh, very tense situation here has been dealt with. Because this is going to be the, the foundation of this uh, entire place. This is also a uh, dwarf escaping, as I see that. Okay, so as it stands right now, there seems to be no chance whatsoever to complete the jobs here. I think... Uh, I think Nomal just made it out alive, barely, as far as I saw things. But, well, miners are quite uh, good swimmers, I often realize that. Okay, a carpenter's workshop has been claimed, but, well, we're going to monitor that in a hot second. Let's go downstairs and check things out. So, here is the claystone, and that is going to be the material we're using for the outside flooring. Uh, well, there's more rock salt. All right. So the fortress's outside areas need to be floored with something, and I decided that sand walls shall live up to its name, so only sedimentary rocks are allowed. All right. Eurist Govosrigoth. What's that standing for? Eurist Leafy Craft. She is possessed by unknown forces. So it's another ghost-made artifact here, but well. Let's check out Eurist as she's tinkering around. She presupposes success in any venture requiring her skills with what would be called blind overconfidence. All right, she's very confident she, that she can do it. She's not particularly interested in what others think of her. She tends to think before acting. She tries to do things correctly each time and she tends to do be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things. She enjoys the company of others and she's moved by art and natural beauty. She is troubled by this since she dislikes the natural world. <laughs> she has a greedy streak and she's often cheerful. She occasionally overindulges. So that totally explains to me why you are a carpenter yourist. If you hate nature, but you still crave for it somewhat, well, carving up those tree um, car carcasses must be way to go. I dig that. Welcome to the Fortress Eurist. Okay, so the claystone. The claystone will make up the rock blocks for outside, or the floors that go on the ground. So here goes claystone. I love to have a wide um, array of different stone types as long-term viewers of the series might know. A high wood floodgate, but she claims it as a family heirloom. Greedy little thing. Well, all right. So we're going to make the... Ah, what was the stone? <laughs> claystone. I only had something with C in my mind. So the claystone blocks will be allowed here too. And yeah, that'll be a long-term project, right? But we we also will expand on our mudstone walls today a little bit because I I really enjoy what you guys gave me as ideas, like uh, making this whole fort more of a um, armed to the teeth thing, where we got lots of soldiers and uh, soldiers living there with nice. Um, rooms for them there and all. I, I really, really enjoyed reading your comments in this regard. So yeah, that's what we're going to do unless I botch it up like that. <laughs> so I think this was the command. Yep. There it goes. So we're obviously going to have to put a lid on it as well. But the dwarves of Sandwalls are really, really uh, diligent people. There's a lot of stuff getting done in no time. I really keep being impressed by their speed. So, I don't know yet how we're going to connect it, but the basic idea is that we're going to have um, archers on these walls. That's what I wanted to do. I meant to do Mark's Dwarfs here. 
So, oh, I need to cancel that one more time as I want symmetry. Need to count how many wall pieces we do in one direction. So that's going to be 15 in one direction. All right. There we go. So these are areas where I still don't know yet what I want to do with them. But there is a specific basic shape of the fort that I just want to set up like that. Okay, we're going to punch a hole in the wall here. And a hole in the wall there. And then we got to put a lid on it again. But let's see. Let's let's put the, the holes in the wall later when we're done. Okay, so things are looking good, aren't they? We need to do a couple of things more, but I'm pretty confident about our progress so far. Okay, that pit here is pretty much okay. But it doesn't please me. Alright, I I really feel like we like we we can do so much better than that. We could fill it at least on this level as well. So where's the water to do so? So there we go. So we need to go one level more downstairs. And then we let it go like this. Oh no, 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 no. We take a take a short path. The shortest possible path even. Okay. It's just simply that I want to have a nice um, village of this well. And, well, the cool thing about aquifer-powered wells, let's call it like that, is that they are always available. You don't need to work for them at all. Once the water is there, it stays there. And no risks involved. So this is really pure goodness. Good. So speaking about which, we're now going to do some dumb things like carving ourselves into aquifer. So what this will do is that stuff will then leak downstairs into this. That's all it'll do. So we're ordering our silly miners now to just uh, produce the biggest leakage that we can, basically. That's that. And then it shall drip downstairs. I really wonder how it works that there is no further um, stuff there, but whatever. So we need wooden buckets. I wonder if we got still logs left. I mean, at the current rate, we are making stuff out of wood permanently, so yeah. It's time to kill a couple more trees. That's totally okay for me. But I'm pretty sure we're going to have some agitated wildlife no, in no time. So... Our soldiers here are doing very fine. So, let's check out Vabok 2 Paddles. Former fish dissector and cleaner and fisher dwarf. So, I want to have a look at one of my other fighters. They will often die, but, uh, well... Oh, Vabok is a woman. She only rarely feels strong cravings or urges. She is bashful. She has a tendency to go it alone. And without considering the advice of others, she takes... Offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful. She's slow to trust others. She often feels discouraged. She tends to avoid any physical confrontation and she works to square this natural tendency with a respect of martial prowess. She tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects and she has a sense of duty. She often feels envious of others. So, Vabok is a really weird one. She doesn't sound like she is uh, soldiering material. But her sense of uh, duty might be just the thing that keeps her on the line the whole time. So this is really, really interesting. So, all right. There we go. 
try to resolve conflicts. Jeez. No conflicts. All right. This is a wonderful, powerful tool because if I rem if I would imagine finding out how all that is supposed to work to get that done without the help of an outside tool, I'd go nuts. Okay, let's start putting down the claystone floor. There we go. So here, yeah, long-term project, my friends, long-term project. But I want to plot down the blueprints nevertheless. So this place is uh, going to receive a nice remodeling as soon as we have the blocks available. Look at that. So this is coming together, my friends. The good part is that we now have a strike force of fighters here in the in the fields outside there. So if anything horrible happens, we have pretty well trained and versed fighters. So let's check back with our smithies. I want to know how the production orders are looking like. So as a matter of fact, we are currently forging the last three pieces of gear out of the suit of 10 that I have ordered. So that means we are now at the point where we are sustaining ourselves. That's wonderful. So let's pick up Imush the Bowyer and uh, send that wonderful young individual into military business. There we go. So we have now five fighters on the surface. The other thing that I really want to do, which is of utmost importance for me as well, is I want to take the, the caverns. You see, it is just intolerable for me that we are still not having a foothold in the caverns. So that's what we're going to work on next. This little pillar here is fun, but it's small. But uh, yeah, we could seal off this little cavity here. Or, well, nah, what we're going to do is quite simple. The barracks will be here on the lowest level of this. And that's where the soldiers will train, live, and do their day-by-day -day thing. We're going to put down the uh, luxurious things of living in the level up above. So we're going to have, with that little trick, the uh, infrastructure for the barracks downstairs together with the barracks. As I really find this a pretty nice spot to take my ventures into the underworld. Although as it stands, I feel like this might be a really harmless spot. Probably not even worth guarding it that heavily. We'll see about that. All right. Heading back upstairs, well, that work is taking a long time, but that has been foreseeable. All right. The fortress is coming together. We should uh, add in some rear section here too, just some basic shapes, and then muck up how we're going to distribute things outside here. I want to have something like uh, arrow towers. So we're going to have a couple of archers training there probably. Or at least that's my idea. I don't know how well it'll work. I haven't had uh, active Mox Dwarves ever, you see. So no conflicts, but why are you not wearing boots, my friends? So, let's see. Seems like the tool is better than everything we had before, but it doesn't seem like it is optimal either. Well, well. well. Let's 
so let's see. We have no storage area for the claystone yet. That is one thing that's also bothersome. Let's change that. Stone. Claystone. And a couple of wheelbarrows. All right. So with that little thing here, we're going to flood the place. Slowly but surely. That is one thing that's really important to me. So I, I really hope that at some point we will be creating some more with areas like that. And an elven caravan has arrived. Okay. Elves, eh? Well, this is a very difficult and interesting question. How will the Banner of Shadow interact with elves or not? I mean, territory-wise, the elves are really far away for the uh, Banner of Shadow people. So I can't do any different than roleplay. At first, a careful exchange of goods and uh, well taking a first look onto each other sort of you know if you are that desperate as we are you're looking for any sort of friendship and that might even include trying to take a trade with these fellas so they got lots of seeds they got leaves and fruits but uh, they just got stuff to make booze out of. So that is something where Zaxul will just shake her his head, I think his, and leave the place. As this is just, uh, you see, nothing to, to work with. Okay. We even struck some gemstone. Look at us. Yeah, so to avoid further leakage, my miners stop doing their thing. But that's just exactly what we don't want. So let's dig some stairwell all the way there. It's all about giving that water a place to to run downstairs. That's all that is. Okay, now then. We are going to assign a new squad, The Last Tombs. I love that name. And uh, we're going to assign Orlon, uh, Orlon Lamar, the peasant, Gorax, the human pikeman. He really wanted to be in that. And let's see, Delir, the trader. Need an extra trader right now, so he might as well. And Kogan, two traders that have arrived in town. And let's take a hunter. So that makes a party of five. It's exactly what we're going to need. Of course, the barracks that we're currently building will be um, beautified and expanded upon and uh, all those things. But uh, to begin with, this is uh, where we're starting. The basic idea of mine is to have down here at the caverns a strike force that is uh, capable to fight back things that might be invading our our world. So, constant training. There we go. So, try to resolve conflicts and update equipment. So, yeah. When it comes down to Gorax, he's, uh, we don't have large gear for him, so we're going to need to uh, tinker something together here. Okay, but my plan is working. We're slowly gathering up uh, liquids from upstairs. As it seems I... Ah, oh, well, whatever. You see that? Slowly piling up. And that's all that I wanted. So I just realized that when it comes down to the order of the lavish meals, 
we can now stock up to the 2,000. Because why not? Alright. Let's head back upstairs and see how things are coming together. Yeah, the claystone deliveries are slowly rocking in. And the roofs here are being made bit by bit. It's a slow poke process. But, uh, well... I'm gonna do a uh, bit of a uh, shape back here. And, well... Or maybe not. I mean, this looks like a, uh, like an anvil, but uh, upside down. I mean, well, we'll see. I do know only one thing. The production of all the blocks that is necessary for this might take a while. So we're going to uh, slaughter some trees in the presence of the elves. I don't give a damn about that. Or did they already leave? No, they didn't leave. So, making ourselves uh, no real friends. And I almost, <laughs> I almost built floor blocks on my main entry. So we got a camel, we got a cocadiel, whatever that is. I really need to check out what we're going to do with these animals. I think I bought that cocadio to find out what it is. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Well, I'd say we're off for a good start. So let's make some gear for our man Gorax. Because I feel like this uh, is one last thing that we can't do for him. So, iron armor breastplate. So, we can see here for humans. And what does he need still? He needs something for the legs, for the head, and for the hands, and for the feet. So, the full package. Okay, so armor, iron helm. Here again, human sized. Yeah, it's. Uh, Iron leggings, human sized. Iron low boot and gauntlets. That's what we're requiring still. Okay, let's change the sizes of these. and hope that we got the necessary material for that. <laughs> it would be a shame if that would go out of the uh, work orders, but I think we're, uh, we're well set. Got a decent amount of fuel available. And there's no fuel being made the whole time. There we go. That's exceptionally well made large iron breastplate. Just what we need. Yeah, admittedly, it's a little bit annoying to uh, have to make it all manually like that. But it is also, well, since the humans want to be our friends like that, I'm the last person to uh, deny them the gear that they'll require to fight side by side with our, uh, with our buddies here. There we go. People are hauling stuff being thirsty while doing so. And in the meantime, Saksul is increasing her armor smith skills. And there's the entire suit of gear for our for our human friend. So ah dang. Stop. And there. So, let's see. Probably there's a conflict with these. I don't know, I have never geared out a human before. I only know it theoretically. Practically never did. 
So for some odd reason, these items are not uh, going into his uh, inventory. But maybe that is because they're being uh, transferred back and forth. So let's wait it out for a hot second. All right. So Zanak, the uh, weaponsmith, has been taken by a Feymood and he already started doing something. For one, it is really good that Zanek is doing this, as this will make him a legendary weaponsmith at the end of this process. And at the same time, this also could res in end up in a really, really cool item. So I'm really, really, really inclined to see what that'll bring. Okay. So... So, turns out he has his own gear. And we have a quest of a, of a bard, but I'm not down. Down at all. So, well, it seems as if there is a... no need of that. So, an iron warhammer. Hell yeah. So, we're going to assign that to our to our militia commander, but we need to have a look at it first. So, telling Goth Duke. Well, that's uh, a quaint weapon of war, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So, telling Goth Duke is going to go into his gear. Oh, oh dang, I accidentally deleted the shield. So, specific weapon, there we go. So, he will have to relearn entirely, which is a bit of a bother as he's been trained as a Swords Dwarf for quite some time now. But I feel as if this is what I I want to give my my captain of the of the militia like that. You know, it's uh, it's partially an insignia as well. Anyways, so my good friends, here ends today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the ride. I'm going to plop in a couple of cabinets into these apartments because these jurists just uh, drop their stuff wherever they are. As you can see, it's a filthy mess. So drop me your comments down below. I am all ears to hear back from your side and we're going to continue with the adventures next time. Leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Check out the description box. There's plenty of links, there's Discord. There is my Twitch channel where I stream each Friday and Sunday in the evening hours of the Middle European time zone. And there is of course also Patreon, PayPal and buy me a coffee. And I'd be very, very happy if you'd gave him a look. Alongside of that, I also have a channel membership program here on YouTube, allowing you to preview all the things that I have pre-recorded. And some migrants have arrived. That is one filthy joke. That's more than 20 people that just arrived. Well, there's a lot to do, but next time in Sandwalls. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being around. See you there.